I would like to talk you through some of the key points on the GCSE regarding electrolysis. It is a much misunderstood part of the curriculum. So let's have a look. So I'm sitting here looking at a reasonably simple one. This one is copper chloride and copper chloride is an ionic substance and it does not conduct when it's solid. You can get some of that. It does not conduct. The reason being it's all stuck together in a lattice. I think that might be a picture of sodium chloride actually, but it's not relevant. That's a lattice, nothing can move. Everything is stuck there. There's no free electrons. All the ions are stuck together in a lattice. So there's nothing there that can move. No current can flow, nothing can happen. However, it's different when you put it in water. Because once you put it in water, it is soluble and it goes into solution and it forms ions. And you can see it forms copper, two plus ions and chlorine negative ions. Now those are free to move. They can zoom around the place and they can carry charge but at the moment they're all just going around in any direction at all and they're not particularly taking anything from one place to another it's just what's going on now then if we stick some electrodes in there we can try and get that to conduct now the electrodes and the wires and the battery and everything else is all made of electrons and protons now just like everything else in the world those electrons can possibly move if you're given the right circumstances, but the protons can't. So there we are, the electrons all zoom over to the cathode. That's just based on which way around the battery is connected up. And we're really mostly going to forget those protons because they don't move. The electrons have gone over to the cathode and the left hand one is the anode. It's full of positive charges which can't move. Now, it's attract. We've got the copper ions, they go over to the cathode and the negative anions they go over to the anode just because opposites attract now remember anode is positive negative anions go to the positive anode seems a bit weird that on the opposite side we've got cations are positive and they go to the negative cathode because opposites attract well let's continue that theme opposites attract now that means the copper ions are going to attract those negative electrons once they get there, now this is what we call reduction. Reduction is gain, seems stupid. Reduction is gain of electrons. And we can see copper two plus in the little formula there, the half equation, copper two plus plus two electrons becomes totally normal copper. Now that copper just builds up and it builds up in a layer on the electrode and you can see it building up. Over on the left hand side though, bit more complicated, it's the same same concepts, opposites attract. So those chlorines, they all have an extra electron, they've got that built into them, that's why they're negative, they lose those. And they become just totally normal chlorine atoms. Like that. Now, those chlorine atoms then join together and they make totally normal chlorine, which is Cl2. And that's called oxidation. The oxidation is the gaining of electrons. Sorry, it's the loss of electrons. Oxidation is loss of electrons. They lost their electrons into the anode. And you can see from the uh, half equation, two chlorine ions, they lose an electron each and they make a totally normal chlorine, which makes Cl2 gas. And it bubbles away, forms a gas, off it goes. Those electrons that have been dropped off there, they zoom around to get to the other side, they flow around to the other side, and they're ready to start the whole thing again. Now, these are the absolute key facts for electrolysis. Let's try a different one. This one's somewhat more difficult. It's going to be difficult for a couple of reasons. Uh, mainly, the big difference being we're going to stick some uh, copper electrodes in there. So we've got copper sulphate and we're putting it in there just like before. So we've got copper two plus ions and we've got SO4 two minus ions, but really it's the same sort of thing. And I'm going to pop in there some copper electrodes. Rather than doing inert copper carbon electrodes, we're going to put reactive copper electrodes in. Now, the thing that's different about this is, is not the copper itself, 
The thing that's different in this one is that the electrodes are made from the same substance that's in solution. We've got copper in solution, or copper reacted to make an ions, and we've also got copper electrodes, and that's going to cause some differences. At first it's going to be the same. We've got electrons, we've got protons. We turn the power on, and the electrons are going to flow over to the other side, just like before, making the one on the right is the cathode, and the one on the left is the anode. Now then, the thing is that anode, the anode is made of copper, and it's got missing electrodes, this missing electrons. So actually, that electrode is exactly the same as those copper ions that are floating around in the water. It's all the same stuff. It's more like that. A copper electrode with missing electrons is essentially just copper 2 plus. OK, so let's have a look what happens. Well, negative ions go that way to the anode and the positive ions go to the cathode, just like before. And all the same sort of things are happening at the moment. We see that over on the right hand side at the cathode, the copper ions, they gain electrons. Just like before, this is no change. They get reduced. And the, the, the cathode actually gets larger. It gets larger because more and more copper is being dropped off. OK. That's no different to before, really. What's going on on the left? Well, the sulphate had lots of extra electrons, and they give that away. They give it away, and they react. They react to the stuff that's there. They make copper sulphate, just like before. And that breaks down and goes into solution, just like before. So the copper in the electrode has reacted with the sulphate. It's made copper sulphate, which is already in solution, and it's just made more of it which then breaks down just like before. And we're sort of back to the beginning again, really. We're all back to the beginning again, and we've got the same number of copper sulfates knocking around we had at the start. So overall, what we find is the copper is moving from the left to the right, from the anode to the cathode. The sulfate is not quite doing the opposite. It's going over to the anode, reacting, going back into solution. Once it becomes an ion in solution again, it can get attracted back to the anode, and then it reacts, and then it can go back again. And that's just a constant thing. The total number of copper sulphate solutions in the solution is, is copper sulphate ions in the solution is not changing. What we see that over time, the cathode increases with weight. It's building up more and more copper ions. But the anode is decreasing, and it decreases by exactly the same amount. Now, all those key facts about electrolysis, they remain true. These are all the same true facts. If you can just remember those, you're, you're a long, long way down the line to pretty much explaining any kind of electrolysis ever. 